foster care or adoption. Today we are going to talk about what it's really like to pick up a newborn directly from the hospital. As a foster parent of 14 years, we picked up lots of newborn babies. And today we are going to give you four different scenarios that may be likely part of your circumstances as you get ready to pick up your newborn directly from a hospital or a care facility. Let's get started. Okay, so before we jump into the four scenarios of what you might experience, and at the end, I'm gonna share my final thoughts, so stick around. We are going to talk about the approval process. So before you pick up an infant, that social worker will need to have contacted the hospital and given some kind of consent for you to be able to take that infant home. They will label you as the foster parents and you also should have received a letter saying your name, the infant's name, the social worker's name, the date of pickup of that newborn. When you get to the facility or the hospital, you will need to take your driver's license. You will need to take that letter of consent and likely a letter or some kind of card or authorization that you are the legal foster parent of that child and you are also currently licensed as a foster parent. So likely there will also be a season where you will need to prep or to train or to learn the medical needs of the, the particular child that you are picking up from the hospital or the care facility. So what that would look like would be that maybe you would go to the hospital for a couple hours. They would walk you through the process or the special needs of that child. A doctor likely will come in to talk to you directly about the needs of that child. You may um, have multiple consultations with nurses. You may have video trainings. You may have hands-on application. So if that child, for example, has feeding issues, you would have to learn how to hold it and, and rub it underneath its chin to stimulate suction or tickle the bottom of its feet or whatever the specific needs are for that particular child. The child may also have a feeding tube or other apparatuses that will go home with that particular child. And so there may be a season of training and of bonding that is required not only for you to bond with that child, but for that child child also to bond with you. So let's talk about the four scenarios of picking up a newborn. Number one is to pick up a child from the NICU, which is the neonatal intensive care unit of the hospital. A lot of our babies we pick up um, exactly at the NICU. It is a po portion or a part of the hospital. It is specifically made for our preemie babies, babies who've been drug exposed, babies who may have special needs or need specific attention and care. And what it's like wherever you pick up your child, there will likely be these big heavy doors where the child and the children that are um, have special needs or are medically fragile are behind this door. You may find that it's super quiet there. It may smell a little like bleach or cleaning supplies. It's often spotlessly clean and the nurses usually scamper around quietly or maybe they're just sitting at that desk just consciously watching each of these babies. A lot of times there's uh, numerous cribs where there's a lot of babies in and in our experience of picking up a newborn from the NICU is a lot of times these babies, they don't have an adult that's standing with them. A lot of times these babies are in little cubbies or little corners um, all by themselves. And what I've heard is that a lot of kids are exposed. However, there is not enough foster parents for these babies and so they don't get taken away. And a lot of times drug exposed parents, as soon as babies are born, they realize like, whew, I have maybe tried to stay clean for nine months or for a month or whatever that is up until they gave birth to that baby. And once that baby is born, sadly, a lot of addicted parents, they go out and use and they leave those babies alone. And so there's a lot of circumstances. Um, it is a little daunting and humbling, and it can be kind of sad sometimes to go to the NICU. At the same time, it can be a beautiful moment knowing that you are about ready to lay your arms around and grab and hold the baby that you will bring home from that NICU. In addition, you may find that the NICU is an extremely quiet place. The only sound that you may hear is the beating of your own heart. Every now and then, 
Those babies usually are super quiet, but every now and then you may hear the sound of a beep, 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 a monitor or one of the baby's machines alerting the nurses that that child needs medical care or attention. But besides that, it's very quiet. You will go into that NICU and likely you may need to scrub down from your elbows down to your hands. There may be a special um, situations where they will ask you to do specific things before you pick up or care for that infant. I know for us, a lot of times we get training before we even pick up that newborn baby the nurse will alert us and discuss the medical needs the history of that infant and this is a great time to ask lots of questions because sometimes there's things that maybe the nurses won't share with you um, but build a great relationship with that nurse because knowing as much about this child's history or about the previous situation of this child will benefit you as you move forward to take care of the special needs of this baby that's been in the NICU. The NICU is also a great time to just come really focused. If you've had other distractions or maybe a stressful situation where you've been trying to find babysitters for your biological kids, which is a great idea when you go to the NICU, make sure not to bring a big crowd. Often the NICU won't allow more than one or maybe two people into the NICU but maybe even leave your phone in the car and just come really focused because you will want to have attentive ears to listen to the nurses, to listen to the needs of that child, to be in tune and attentive and to bond with that child. The infant that you are bringing home, its care and possibly its safety depends on you knowing everything that you can about that child's needs and being able to meet those needs the best that you can. When it is time for you to take home a baby from the NICU, this is a great time, again, that you will get training. Often that child, if it was a preemie in the hospital, they will do a, a car seat test to be able to evaluate if it's heavy enough or if it's able to hold its head enough to be in a regular car seat. If it's a preemie, they will often lend you your own special smaller car seat. Um, they may send preemie little teeny tiny bottles home with that baby or a cap or special diapers. Um, definitely ask if that baby needs special formula and it's the weekend, it may be super hard for you to get that formula or to be able to go out and order it in time or run in a store with a brand new teeny tiny baby. And so ask the nurses if there's extra or an abundance sitting around that baby station, make sure to ask for what you need or ask questions at least. And likely those nurses will just volunteer um, extra because they know that you are here as a foster parent and that your resources are limited and they will want what's best for that baby. You may I also find that you have different responses from the nurses. So if this baby was the calmest, sweetest, happiest, cutest baby, a lot of times nurses might gather around and coo and talk to the baby and stuff your bag filled with stuff and be kind of sad to see this baby go. Imagine they, they've cared for this baby from the moment that it was born. There wasn't a biological parent. They were the surrogate parents for this infant. And so you likely will have some kind of response from the nurses. At the same time, we've had experiences where a baby has been exposed and cried and cried and cried and nurses just kind of scoot us out the door and they're not too sad to see these babies go but it's totally understandable again I just wanted to reiterate make sure to ask lots of questions when you're home with this baby and it's the middle of the night or there's a, a situation that you're not aware of maybe the baby turns blue and is having cardiac issues maybe it starts to tremble and shake and you don't know if that's a seizure or not make sure to ask the nurses they've had so much experience not just in drug exposure but as well with that particular infant when you get home it's going to be harder to call you don't want to call at three o'clock in the morning there's times that it's limited where you can actually contact the nurses or the staff at that particular facility or hospital. And so when you see that nurse face to face, eye to eye, make sure to ask as many questions as you can. You also may find that when you get ready to go meet your newborn, it may feel a little strange. The baby may have physical deformities or disabilities. It may not look at you. It may not coo. Uh, it may be so tiny that it just lays there. Sometimes you bond instantly with infants. It is an unquestionable, amazing, holy, incredible experience. Other times it may feel foreign, it may feel strange, and maybe even a little sad to think that you are getting ready to take home another woman's baby. 
So I just want to encourage you, give yourself lots of space. Let yourself grieve. If you're going back and forth day after day to care for and bond with this baby, don't be afraid to cry on your way home or to pray for the birth mom or to pray for this baby. Most of all, to pray for you, that you would have God's heart as you pick up this newborn and it becomes a part of your family. And lastly, I just want to encourage you, caring for a brand new baby, especially a baby from the NICU, is extremely difficult. You will need to have as many hands and as much support as you can. And so if you have people in your community, people at your church, if you have friends or grandparents willing to help, don't be afraid to accept that help. If you have people wanting to bring you meals or care for your biological kids or maybe other adopted kids, don't be afraid to just say, yes, I need help, or even to reach out and ask for help. It can be hard and it can be exhausting. No, we didn't birth these kids physically, so our bodies are not experiencing the repercussions of childbirth, but there's still oftentimes a lot of those same emotions from being up at night and looking at this little life and knowing that we are responsible to meet its needs and to care for it the best that we can. So the second scenario is picking up a child against the birth family's wishes. And that can be the bio parents, it can be aunts and uncles, it can be grandmas and grandpas. And honestly, it is hard enough to pick up a newborn, to take home someone else's baby that they have carried for nine months and births, it is hard enough, but then to know that you're doing it against the family's wishes. It can feel excruciating. It can feel complicated. It can feel like there's a barrage of emotions that may come with that. And so give yourself grace through this process. Have um, just a lot of patience for yourself and for those around you and make sure to listen. So listen to the social workers, especially to the hospital staff, listen to the nurses and the doctors and even police officers. We've had situations where a police officer has had to escort us out the back door to take an infant because the family was so enraged. And of course we know that as foster parents, it's not our fault, we're not the one that created the situation or took away their child, but it can feel super stressful. And so make sure to listen, don't ask why, this isn't a time to be like, why? What's going on? And I need to know everything. Just listen and obey what they tell you. They see the full picture. They know the entirety of this parent's case or the relative, the relatives and the situation that's revolved around this particular child. And so be uh, in tune to what's going on around you with the family and those that might pass by as you're holding or caring for this baby, because this is a really sensitive time for everybody. And we want to give those around us, just a lot of sensitivity to what is happening in this moment as you take home their baby from the hospital. You also may want to bring someone with you. So during the bonding and, and medical education part, it's not necessarily required, but it, as you get ready to discharge from the hospital, if you think the situation is volatile or someone has warned you that the situation may escalate, this is a really great time to bring someone with you, a parent, a close friend, your spouse. Make sure to discharge as a team so that you feel safe, so you feel protected, um, and you can really, again, just really focus on that baby as you get ready to care for that child's needs in the days and the weeks to come. I would also encourage you to bring a diaper bag. Bring everything with you as if you were the one taking home that baby because you are, and just assume that no one is gonna bring anything else to the hospital. So don't assume that the nurses will give you diapers or formula or a new change of clothes. You bring that with you. So go out and shop if you must, or um, you know have things ahead of time so that you're prepared. Because imagine, so already if a birth parent or a family member doesn't want that child to go into foster care, or to be adopted, whatever the situation is, you know, imagine a lot of times they're just going to kind of fight that by not bringing things for the baby. And I know that sounds cruel. I know it sounds like they may be punishing the baby, but they're looking for power and they're looking for control because this is a very powerless situation for them. At the same time, maybe birth families don't have the finances. They don't have the resources to buy the things that that infant needs. And so you'll want to get all the supplies ahead of time and make sure to have those with you at the hospital when you're there. But again, to be really sensitive to the birth parents or to anything that someone has brought in. So if they want the baby to go home in a certain outfit, make sure that you put that outfit on that baby, take pictures, maybe send it to the birth family later, and just be really sensitive to all those things, but make sure that you have what 
what you need as you get ready to go pick up that infant from the hospital. So the third scenario is picking up an infant from the hospital when the birth parents are actually there. What I want to remind you is that the birth parents don't need to be at the hospital when that baby gets discharged and goes into the home of a foster home or in the arms of maybe an adoptive parent. It is their choice. Imagine how hard that would be as a mom that you carried a child and then that child is being removed from your care, maybe even forever. Imagine the feelings you must feel. Wouldn't it be easier to just not be there, to not be a part of it, to not watch your child go into the arms of another mom? And so imagine if that birth parent is there when that baby leaves the hospital, they are there because of love, because they love that infant that they carried for nine and a half months. And so please just be sensitive to these birth parents. Look out and be a in tune to what they're thinking, what they might be feeling. Give them as much power and control and say over their, that infant until you get that infant into your home because they're going to have strong emotions and strong feelings and they need us to be sensitive. And again, please respect the birth parents. Respect them by listening, by not barking commands or orders. Let them carry the infant to the car if that's possible. Let them carry the car seat again. Have them change the infant's clothes into what they want or to be able to have every last moment that they can with their child. Maybe step out of the room if they're nursing for one last time or if they're saying goodbyes. Just give them space and be respectful. It's an impossibly difficult thing that they're willing to do or maybe not not willing to do. And so we just want to honor and give as much dignity to that situation as we possibly can. And finally, maybe give that bio family some words of encouragement as you get ready to take their baby to your home. Maybe look them in the eyes, guarantee them that you will take excellent care of their infant that you care about it and that you love it and you will be sensitive and nurturing and do everything in your power to make sure that that child is safe and healthy. Maybe go in and ask if you can have a hug. Ask them if you can take pictures of the first day or first week of that infant's life and send that to them via email or text or through the social worker if need be. That parent needs as much confirmation and as much help healing that grieving heart as they can possibly get. And you want to be a bridge in between that situation so that it can be as smooth as it possibly can. So the fourth scenario is picking up a drug exposed baby from a detox center. And so that may look different depending where you live at. You may be required to drive. We drove one time for hours to get to our little guy to pick him up. And so it just depends where you live and where these detox centers are. These centers are a little bit different from the NICU. In the NICU, these babies are kept very calm. Um, it's very quiet. There's a lot of staff usually that are really sensitive to the needs of the babies that are in the NICU. They're really just keeping those babies alive and healthy. In the detox center, it can be a little different. Sometimes you can hear a baby crying and raging over and over again. You may have the nurse staff might be a little bit more agitated or stressed out because they're hearing loud noises all day and they're hearing beeps and having to deal with monitors and maybe critical situations for these infants. And so the center may look a little different. So like the NICU, there may be big doors separating these infants that have been exposed to the community. And a lot of these infants have been on morphine or other drugs to smooth the transition in between their addictive state prenatally to a regular state outside the womb. What people don't realize is a lot of times these babies will need extra bonding when you get home because in the detox center, there is a big transition of people that go through. So you may have someone that comes in for a couple hours and this child has probably been there more than a couple days, like a lot of the kids in the NICU. And so sometimes these kids have been in the detox area for a month or so and they have transitioned in different arms over and over so they haven't had a chance to really bond and plus their bodies have been in such a state of stress they couldn't even often relax enough to be able to focus on the nurturing and the bonding aspect of relationships outside of the womb. So as you get ready to go into the detox center, um, be prepared that there may be a lot of sounds. There may be cries that sound like uh, cats that are screeching at the top of their lungs and there may be staff running around. There may be a lot of uh, monitors or beeps that are going on. And again, the nurse staff might be a little bit more high strung or 
on alert, if you will, than in the NICU. So similar to the NICU, these babies will have certain instructions according to what drug that they were exposed to. So whether that's cocaine or meth or what a heroin, whatever that looks like, that child will have specific instructions. So again, ask lots of questions to the nurse, the doctors, the staff at this care facility and make sure that you're listening. Maybe bring a paper and pen and write down what has worked for that particular child because in our experience as foster parents, you may have multiple kids and they're exposed to the same drug, let's say maybe meth, but they respond in different ways. And so some babies need to be wrapped really tight and snuggled and then other babies, they need you to kind of unwrap them and they are really sensitive to touch and they don't want you to look in the, them in the eyes and they need dim light. And so it really depends on the child, but again, ask a lot of questions. Bring someone with you maybe that has a second set of ears that can receive the information about what's needed to care for this infant as you get ready to bring him or her home. So these kids might look a little different than maybe a child in the NICU. They may not look you in the eyes. They may shake in their car seats on the way home from the detox center. They may have bright red rashes on their bottom as they've been filtering through the drugs that have been in their system for so long. It can feel alarming and maybe scary and a little abnormal, especially if you've cared for typical infants in the past. But at the same time, the nurses, likely a lot of the staff will be super excited when this child goes home with you because they will have known and seen how hard these babies have fought to be able to have a chance and normalcy and to be in a home that's healthy where they can thrive and become everything that they are meant to be. You also may be asked by the staff if you would like to see a short video or a, a movie about that child's particular withdrawal from that drug exposure always say yes. If there's any videos or training or learning, whether at the NICU or at the detox center, make sure that you say yes, because these videos, again, are vital. When you get home and you're with this baby alone, it's really hard to be able to get the information you need or try to search Google or search the internet. And it's like grabbing at straws, trying to figure out how you can help that baby. And so make sure to watch the videos. Again, those nurses and that staff, they know the exact drug that that child was exposed to. They know prenatal information that maybe you don't know, and they will know how they have responded to the drugs based on their evidence of, of observing that child as long as it's been in that detox center. As you get ready to drive home with this baby, please be sensitive to that state of agitation that a drug-exposed baby might be in. So I would encourage you, again, don't bring a lot of kids or a lot of people with you. We made the mistake one time of driving our whole family to go pick up one of our babies, um, but you will want to have as quiet as a car and a house as you can. I would encourage you not to play music, not to have big, long conversations or to talk on the phone to your mother or a close friend about this baby, and just keep the atmosphere as quiet as you can because that baby is not only maybe withdrawing still to some extent, but also learning to adapt and gauge the new environment, the new people, the new sights and sounds of the new environment that this baby is getting ready to go in. And lastly, make sure that you have a mindset that is ready to go into a days or weeks or months of this child detoxing from the drug that was in its system. Come prepared, come rested, relax, come with books maybe beside your bed that you can read in the middle of the night or during the day or audio books downloaded to your uh, iPhone so that you will have the information that you need, you'll have the support that you need before you take this infant home from the detox center. So these are my final thoughts. Whether you take a baby from the NICU, whether you take it with the bio parents right there, handing the baby over to you, whether you take it with family or extended family that is present at the hospital and maybe even a little hostile, or whether you take a drug exposed baby from the detox center, it is an experience that will change your life. It is vital as you get ready to carry another wo woman's baby into your home that you remember that these women, they are people. It can be so easy to judge. It can be easy to become angry or look at a baby shaking or tremoring or fighting for its life and to judge the bio birth mom. One thing I know is that we do not know what these birth parents have experienced. We don't know their story. We don't know their past. We don't know their childhood or their upbringing. And so to look at one snapshot of their lives, which is the 
little infant that we're holding in our arms, it can be easy to judge or to criticize or to feel angry or bitterness against these birth parents, but they are people just like me and you. And my guess is there are times in your life where you've made decisions that maybe are selfish or they're not for the best of someone else, but yet someone still loved you and someone still embraced you and accept you and most of all forgive you. This journey of caring for another woman's baby is going to be easier if you love and if you forgive and if you give grace to these birth parents because I guess at one time in your life, God has given grace to you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe below for more videos just like this one and like it and share it with your friends. And remember, go out, live bold, and be brave.